Okay, you want to build an AI bot on Google Cloud. You do a Google search and you find products like Google Vertex AI Conversation, Dialogflow. You see a couple of DIY options here using Gemini and custom code. And then you also see Vertex AI Agent Builder. I wouldn't blame you for being confused. So let me try and explain the landscape. Let's start with a little bit of history. In 2017, Google launched Dialogflow ES or Dialogflow Essentials. This is a chatbot building platform where you define a basic flat set of intents and you define training phrases for each of these intents and you have different ways of fulfilling those intents. So that's kind of a basic old paradigm of building bots. And then in 2020, Google launched Dialogflow CX, which allows you to do more complex conversation flows with hierarchies and different uh, flows to fulfill different kinds of intents. And it is optimized for customer service and contact center use cases. Then in 2023, Google launched a capability within Dialogflow CX called Generative Playbooks. The idea of Generative Playbooks is that you can create a prompt in natural language to an LLM and have that LLM handle a conversation flow. So it's basically a way to incorporate some of these newer Generative AI capabilities into your chatbot and that LLM can call tools and it's basically a React agent under the hood here. In addition to that, there's also a capability called Generator which is basically a simple ad hoc LLM call that you can make at some point during your conversation to fulfill an intent. So for example, you can just summarize the conversation so far and that can be a generator that you can use in your flows. A little bit after that, because of the popularity of retrieval augmented generation, Google created a chat application, which is basically uh, an application that runs on top of Dialogflow, but specifically meant for retrieval augmented generation use cases, where you create a data store with a specific set of data that can be unstructured or structured. Then you select that data store for your app, and then your app will basically be a pre-built Dialogflow bot with that data store configured in there with a kind of a catch-all intent that will basically just respond to any questions with data that is found in a data store, very much as a traditional RAG application. So if you go check how Dialogflow CX is set up when you create a chat app, you'll see right in the start page here, a data store that is basically containing the data that you configured during the app creation phase. And here the agent will basically respond with an answer from the data store to whatever question comes in. And you can configure also things like how many links to show uh, for source citation and things of that sort. If you go over to, for example, publish, you can see the native UI here from the flow that you can use to publish on a website, but there are also integrations with telephony products, text base and uh, chat messengers, and a bunch of third party products here that you can use with dialogue flow. So again, a product optimized for customer service use cases. Now, if you go to agent settings, you can see a couple of more generative AI capabilities in here and configurations. So here's where you configure things like safety filters, band phrases. In the generative agent configuration, you can set up the model and the token limits. You can also set up a generative fallback. This is the answer that the model is gonna give if the answer is not found in the knowledge base. So you can have, for example, a custom instruction here to say what the model should say in case a, an answer cannot confidently be found in a knowledge base. And you can write whatever you want here. This is basically a prompt to the model. In the data store tab, you can configure grounding thresholds. So how much confidence you want to have in the answer before you give the answer. You can configure other things here, like the name, the company, the agent works for and the agent can use that information when interacting with users. Now, because the playbook feature became quite popular as a no-code way of creating generative AI agents, Google then created a new type of app called Agent, which is effectively just a separate user interface and more friendly user interface to work with generative playbooks, which still runs on top of Dialogflow. But now you have a interface here that gets straight to the prompt configuration and examples and tool setups and generative AI settings and integrations. So it's a separate interface from Dialogflow. However, if you go to Dialogflow and select the agent that you created, you see that it is indeed 
just a Dialogflow agent with a playbook configured. And nothing prevents you from actually working in Dialogflow with this agent and creating, for example, an intent and you know training phrases for your intent. And you can set up that agent with both Dialogflow intent-based conversation flows plus a playbook, which can be a fulfillment for a specific intent, for example. So for instance, here I can configure a route to the intent that I just created. And as a response from the agent, it's just going to say that it doesn't sell anything. Then we can go to the playbook and configure our prompts here to the model to handle a specific conversation flow. So here, let's say we just answer whatever question the user asked in Spanish. And we can test that in the test agent simulator here. And I'm asking stuff and getting responses in Spanish as expected. But now if I choose to specifically test not the playbook, but the flow, then if I trigger the intent that I created here, it will give that hard-coded response. Okay, so in summary, in Agent Builder, if you create a chat type app, it will be taken to Dialogflow with a data store pre-configured, and it's basically a retrieval augmented generation type of application. If you create an agent type app, you will be taken to the agent console, which is effectively just a UI on top of the generative playbook capability within Dialogflow. And again, you can mix and match these uh, generative AI based agent with conversation flows or intent based conversations. So that creates a spectrum of possibilities here. You can create deterministic agents, which are workflow based with predefined paths and not much in terms of generative responses. And here, the use cases that would be appropriate for that would be things like order status, insurance claims, and password resets. So basically, whenever you have very specific conversation flows that you want more deterministic responses out of and not a lot of degrees of freedom or generative capabilities in the agent, then somewhere in the middle, there is a hybrid agent, which is where you combine predefined paths and more flexible generative conversations. Here, you can have certain flows or intents be handled with like an intent-based conversation flow but also a generative model that has more flexibility in terms of how it handles conversations. And then use cases here would be shopping assistant or a banking assistant or a healthcare benefits agent. Then we have the full flat generative agents where it's fully driven by LLMs. It's a reason and act agent pattern with potential to use and you basically prompt it and provide examples and the agent will take care of the conversation. So a lot of freedom and flexibility here, but also a little bit riskier because, you know, models could hallucinate or misuse a tool, etc. But here, good use cases would be things around retrieval augmented generation, like corpus Q&A, open-ended Q&A, or even content creation assistance. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about naming. So the Agent Builder product used to be called Jenna Builder, where there are two types of applications. There's Vertex AI Conversation and Vertex AI Search, with Vertex AI Conversation being basically dialogue flow with those generative capabilities like generators, generative fallback, and more importantly, the ability to add a data store and create a retrieval augmented generation type of application. Then that product got renamed to Agent Builder with the same kinds of apps, just now called Conversation and Search. And then we got the Playbook or generative playbook capability in conversation. And now the agent builder has evolved to include a new type of application called an agent, which is basically a new UI for a playbook. But we'll still have conversation apps with playbooks and also the data stores, so you can create a simple RAG application. And now Google is in the process of rebranding this once again with conversation and agents now being collapsed into conversational agents. And with that will come a unified user interface that will sort of combine dialogue flow with the playbook interface in something that looks a little more cohesive. And there will be API capabilities coming up as well. But basically, this is an effort to consolidate everything under the conversational agent umbrella, which again, will still have that dialogue flow product under the hood managing the uh, state machine and session handling and the things that Dialogflow does pretty well, 
with a more friendly interface that allows you to develop these agents that are either fully deterministic, fully generative, or a hybrid. And we can hope that this will all feel like one consolidated experience. And we can also hope that there will be no further rebranding. All right, I hope this video was somewhat helpful and thank you for watching.